Hey friend, if you struggle with painting water, knowing where to add your strokes and how to add your strokes to water using wet and wet technique, this tutorial is covering how to paint water in watercolor. And it's part two of our series for March where we are painting the cover art of my third book, Everyday Watercolor Seashores. So last week we did the cohesive smooth gradient wash. And now we're building on top of that with our water portion of this landscape. So if you're ready for that, then let's dive in. So I have my wash down from the previous week's tutorial where I taught you how to do a consistent and cohesive, smooth looking gradient. This is a little blemish on the paper block that I have. This will happen with all brands from time to time, um, but some of the binding glue got on the paper it looks like, and so it's creating this. But without that, it would have been very smooth. Um, but I'm gonna cover it up with my ocean uh, water stuff here, which is what we're doing in this video. So my first step, I'm just gonna use this as a ruler, this is my original, is going to uh, sketch in the horizon line just so I have a straight line where I know I'm stopping. Um, so it's not super slanted. You can use a ruler for this or just eyeball. Um, obviously, totally up to you, but I'm just gonna eyeball because it seems fun. All right, so now that I have this faint line down for my horizon line, I'm going to be using the same brush that I did, uh, that I used for last week's video, my inch and a half Mottler brush, and I'm going to lay down my first layer, which is also going to be a wash. It's just gonna be a wash, and I'm also gonna start dark to light, so I'm basically doing what we did for the background here um, for my first layers for my water. So I wanna start with a really thick, milky consistency, but I'm gonna get rid of the excess water on my paper towel, so it'll be just basically damp pigment. Slightly damp. So I'm gonna get rid of excess water. And we're gonna go right up against the horizon line So there's my first stroke. I had to make sure it was straight across to have that straight across horizon line. And then I'm gonna grab water, clean off my brush, and uh, get rid of the excess water on my paper towel and bring this down, because we're doing a gradient wash just like we did in last week's video. So as I go stroke by stroke, I'm getting rid of the pigment that I pick up and the excess water and I'm bringing it down from left to right because I'm right-handed, right to left if you're left-handed probably. And just gradually fading out that color. And now that we are getting closer to the bottom, I might grab some yellow ochre for the bottom for a little bit of that sand color to start poking through. My yellow ochre is buried under my orange. So we're just gonna make our own color because I need to clean that a little bit. So I'm gonna grab yellow, primary yellow, and whatever this orange situation is happening on top of my yellow ochre. And a little touch of brown. A little more yellow. A little black. And we'll just sweep that here on that bottom edge while it's still wet and maybe curve up on the ends a little bit because the water would be coming up the sand in all different angles. Let that bleed because that'll be fun. And then I'm going to darken the top of this wash a little bit more. And then I need to work quickly because I am going to be doing wet and wet brush strokes with a size six round brush for my mid tones for my, uh, my waves or ripples in the water. So I'm gonna grab my size six brush and a slightly darker value of this Prussian blue 
dab on my paper towel to get rid of a little excess and just start from one edge with a slanted hold at about 55 65 degrees away from the paper and medium pressure and then gradually release that pressure so that it, you get kind of this tapered sweeping stroke go straight across and don't go at an angle like this the waves would be coming straight across so it's kind of like weaving them in and out of each other at random if some blur a lot that's okay because we can use it to build a bigger wave on top but try and get really thick color dab off the excess water so it doesn't blend as much the more water you have on your brush the more it will blend I'm just going to go back over some of the tops of these with thicker, darker blue to create a shadow. Maybe some indigo or Prussian blue with black for a little bit more contrast. And we need to bring in some thinner sweeping strokes in this background. But I'm just back and forth with my wrist and grabbing thicker, darker color, darker blue to build up some of these waves. And make them have a little bit more dimension. So like I'll go back on top of this bigger blue stroke with a dark, dark blue. And maybe separate it into two waves. I'm just kind of going in between the medium value blues on either side of it with this darker color. And again, going from pressure and then gradually releasing it so it has that tapered on the ends. So with my darker blue, I, you can either add black to Prussian blue or if you have indigo, um, that's a great color to add as your contrast to your mid-tones that are blurring out a little bit more. Um, but just kind of find those lighter or mid-tone blues and go on the top and bottom of those sections to accentuate and you don't have to be exact about that placement but it just helps pull out two waves instead of just one if you just go on the top of your previous strokes so we're making sure to leave that lighter blue and the really light uh, base layer between and we don't want to cover it up a ton because that's what's gonna help make this look more like a body of water. I'm gonna bring this darker indigo more on this side too because of that little blemish on the paper to help that not stand out as much. So I'm just gonna darken up this side a little bit. But like I said, that happens from time to time. I've had it happen to me on a pad of Arche. I've had it happen to me on Legion paper. I've had it had to happen to me on Fabriano. And now, obviously, Saunders Waterford is what I use. But it's okay. So this is still really wet because of what I taught you in last week's video of how to paint an even wash. I'm 
now just a couple more of these strokes. But as you can see, I'm leaving a lot more of the light blues in here to make it feel brighter. Um, and then it's fading off and getting darker further away. But that contrast is really, really necessary in bringing a lot more light into the piece and showing these rolling waves. And every single stroke that I'm adding to this ocean, I'm making sure to get rid of that excess water. Because if I add excess water to this at this stage, it's still slightly wet, so it'll create a little puddle and cauliflower bloom moment. So just be careful to not add too much water with your pigment once you go to your paper at this stage. Coming back on some of these edges to make them darker. And then in next week's video, we're going to paint our rock details and the first steps of our wave that we're gonna have crashing on top here. So just going back on some of these, cleaning it up, darkening it a little bit. Okay, so we're ready for this to dry and then I will see you in next week's video when we start to add the rocks and the first steps to the wave. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that was really helpful and insightful. Don't forget your Mask of Zorro strokes. Those are very, very helpful for painting your waves using wet and wet. Next week, we're gonna be doing more of the wet on dry layer, so stay tuned for that next Saturday. Also, make sure you pre-order or order my book, Everyday Watercolor Seashores. If you want more of this type of tutorial, there's lots of it inside of that book, so make sure you check that out on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold, you can order this book, or maybe even grab it from your library if they have it stocked already. Um, but as always, thank you so much for watching these tutorials and next week we're going to be building on what we did today. If you haven't yet checked out my online course called Everyday Watercolor Companion Course and you have one of my books or if, if not all of my books or even if you don't have any of my books, this is a under $100 course that's going to give you all of the techniques and ways to build on previous techniques. The best way to learn watercolor is packed inside this course so make sure you check that out and I will see you in next week's video.